Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 3 of our new Let's Play. If you've missed the start of the episode, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to episode 1. There's also a link to the playlist in the description below, and as always, all of my videos will have thumbnails. Last episode we took Fort Ticonderoga, pretty awesome. Fort Saratoga and Fort Ticonderoga were pretty fun fights. We did take a decent chunk of casualties over here, but I do have a plan, and you guys saw this last episode. What I've been doing is sending these these militia regiments up to reinforce Fort Ticonderoga and Fort Saratoga because they don't have recruits. They don't even have workforce. It's, it's very, very small amounts. Now, I did do a little bit of changing to... Uh, to our forces because we did unlock the Continental Army, which means we do have the Fusilier Regiments and the Artillery Regiments. So these over here, I disbanded one of the regiments here and added the six pounder field gun in an artillery, uh, well it's a company I guess, this whole thing is a regiment, so a artillery company to the second Connecticut. I think that'll make them better. Unfortunately, I was stupid and did lose, I think it was this regiment. I did lose the artillery in this regiment, so I went ahead and replaced it with some three-pound galloper guns. And then in Hartford, I am recruiting up another, our first recruitment of fusiliers outside of the fusiliers that we received earlier. So I think that's pretty exciting over there. We are working on recruiting Benedict Arnold. Somebody made a funny comment on the last video where it was like, I, I think I said something like, I need Benedict Arnold and, you know, not words you traditionally hear coming from the Americans in the American Revolution. But uh, he, he will be desperately needed. Now, our next plan is to take Fort Frederick just to shore up this before Canada opens up over here. And then I think we can start taking Fort Rice, Hubbardton, and then maybe pushing over to here. Now the AI, I don't know if it's changed at all. They love, 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 love holding Fort Stevens. So we might go grab like Fort Lavelle. I think if we look at the supply network map, yeah, Fort Stevens for whatever reason is not connected to Leicester. So it actually makes sense to take uh, Fort Rice and Hubbardton, then Fort Lavelle because they're part of the supply network chain. Interestingly enough, if I took Harberton, that cuts off Fort Rice, but I, I think I think the natural progression is, you know, take Fort Frederick, garrison it up with uh, maybe two militia, or maybe a regular and a militia, I'm not sure, just to stop the Canadian invasions that happen, and then go and take Harberton, where we're starting to get to the point where we have the forces to do so. We are building up our forces and things are looking good. I also did a couple things like build schoolhouse. Um, I, I should say we have some schoolhouses building around our settlements. Hatfield is pretty good. It has 1.4 con, uh, construction points. So it'll probably look just like Lester when all is said and done. So like a schoolhouse, weaver's house, fur trader, and stable. I might put a... Mm, Trying to, th trying to think. I, I do need more of the brickmakers. I think they're the carpenters' houses eventually, but that is um, some, something we'll have to think about. So, Burn, you need to go up here. That is your new plan. And then, as I said, once Benedict Arnold gets over there, that'll be good. Wow, we're actually low on muskets. That's, um, I didn't think that would happen, but that is rather interesting. We could... Um, we're not using a crazy amount of ammunition, so we could boost up our musket production and then drop uh, the ammunition down a little. We could... no, we only have seven factories available. I would like this number to um, go a little bit higher. I You're sort of in a conundrum at the beginning, like, do you build out your infrastructure, which takes forever? Um, because I would really like more factories. I would love to put mining over uh, in New York because you can see that they have copper over here and boosting the mining production of say New York would be excellent. We have mining production over here um, which is pretty good mining over here and for some reason there's a uh, naval 
production over here. I don't know if you can actually delete that. That's something that the game puts into place early. I wonder if the developers thought, hey, we we're going to put a port here. So that makes sense, but then they never put the port there. Um, but that makes me laugh just a little. It's, it's quite funny. Um, and then we'll definitely need to stock up on provisions as time goes along. We'll probably put more naval production down here and then factories, uh, lots of factories around too. We could make New York sort of factories also. I don't know how well that'll work out. Um, somebody was saying there's something, some correlation between factories and construction points. I'm not entirely sure. I, I still don't fully understand the economy of this game as it's not fully fleshed out yet, but I mean, that's perfectly fine. Interesting that we don't have any muskets. I thought we were doing pretty well on musket production. Obviously we are not. I could equip one of our companies with some brown vesses and that could, could help out things, but at the same time, hmm, not entirely sure about that. Interesting over here. Oh, they need muskets too. Um, so wagons have just finished, which is fantastic. And then we're going to go down over here to support training. I think that is the best direction to go. Um, I would love more factories. That's why, as I said, I'm a little hesitant on that. But really, I should actually start making more of the what are they called? The the construction, the carpenter's shop. That's the that's the one I'm looking for. So I might actually make Hatfield. Well, actually, can Hatfield even produce? Uh, some places can't do fur. So they can do weaver. They could do a stable. So they could also do a carpenter shop. So I think I'll build a carpenter shop in a Hatfield. I think that is a good use of its resources. Point six is okay to start building in. New Haven, they have their carpenter shop. I would like this to also have another recruiting house and make uh, sort of this area a massive recruiting area. More British troops approaching Boston by sea. Um, that is a little bit problematic, but um, we'll we'll deal with it. We'll, we shall figure it out. Okay, you guys, unfortunately, you're now being disbanded, but that's to boost up the recruits to fill you out also your muskets will go back into the pool which will be nice these guys need to uh, well first they need to level up and i would like them to go to hatfield because hatfield is a little bit open right now and i i don't want to lose hatfield that is for sure um somebody mentioned you know it, it would be a shame if i gave up on the fleet stuff I agree. I'll figure out the fleet stuff, but you can see I've got like five ships patrolling over here. So it's really hard for me to send out my fleet at the moment. There's the 580. Guys, how do I get the mini map to show? There we go. I don't know how well you guys can see that on the overall map, but that is what we are doing there. I feel like Kingston could definitely see Weaver's House, Warehouse. So they can't build a fur shop. So that's It'll be 52 days to build that. That's not terrible. Let's start building that up. That'll be good. Um, I really do need Benedict Arnold over there. Uh, funny enough, my eventual plan is to have Benedict Arnold hold the Western Front and send him to Fort Ticonderoga. Uh, historically speaking, that sounds absolutely terrible. But um, that will be the eventual plan is Benedict Arnold will probably be over on this front while General Quicksilver takes over this area here. And as I said, I'm a little bit worried because I can't see over here. That is always a problem. Um, these guys still need more recruits. How are we doing on muskets? So what's going on here? Um, Spain and Britain entered a state of war. That's about four years early, but, you know, good nonetheless. That is uh, perfectly fine there. I was, what was I doing? I was looking at muskets. We have 68 in storage. As I said, I could equip, I could start trying to equip some of these guys with brown vesses. And what you do is you go in here, select this guy, and let's just um, hit apply. Why does it say arsenal? Oh, because it'll go down to 31. Yeah, math is hard. And that'll open up a few more civilian muskets into the overall pool. Now, 
Uh, I do need to go into production management and I would like to start building supply wagons. And I don't want it to be continuous, but I eventually do want a good chunk of supply wagons. So I would like it to be about, about 20 total and man, I really need, really need more factories because the goal here would be to really pump out our musket production. We, we do need more muskets. So that's nine ships over here. This is what I'm talking about the fleet. Other people on Discord said they haven't been having this issue. I'm really struggling with fleet. Obviously, I'm not incredibly good with the fleet stuff, but, um, you know, that is that is how it be sometimes, or how it goes if you want to use a little bit more of proper English. Um, this is interesting. We have definitely run out of manpower over here. I would, uh, I would love to keep pushing out manpower in the other direction. Um, so tensions, I don't exactly always understand the foreign relations, but it's not fully fleshed out yet. This is something that as the game is produced further and further, or it's further along in production or development, however you want to word that, it'll, it'll look better. So let's go to our headquarters real quick, take a look at what is going on. So Army Innovation 2 is uh, plus one general's limit in Benedict Arnold. And this is really important. Uh, there's a lot of people on the Discord that ask, like, hey, I I recruited, uh, where's Henry Knox? Um, trying to find a good, okay. So say like Southern Department, it just says new General Charles Lee. If you ever have a technology that just says new generals Charles Lee, that does not increase your overall general's limit. So you would recruit him, and the only thing you could do is either replace your mate, uh, your current general, or use him as a regimental commander. Now over here, you can see Benedict Arnold, Army Innovation 2, specifically says plus one general's limit, new general Benedict Arnold. So I believe there's probably a cap of five generals, which, interesting, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, I would like more, but... This is, these are the technologies to actually increase your general's limit. I think um, the one I'm thinking of is ordnance facilities. Yeah, so down here, new general and building gives you Henry Knox and magazine, but it's not plus one to your general limit. So Henry Knox could only be used as a commander of a regiment unless you want him to replace somebody. So that is really important to keep in mind that um, if you want another general on the field, it also has to say plus one general's limit. I also did some shuffling around of uh, chief intelligence on, I think it was the quartermaster and chief of Navy, I believe. Um, I just every once in a while go look for guys that have better stats because they do show up every once in a while. That's kind of what we're going there. And then skilled craftsmen will eventually go down to... United States muskets and the Virginia 76 and we will be good there. So I might speed through a little bit of this campaign until I get a force ready to take on Fort Frederick, but that is where we are right now. Okay, I decided to be a little cheeky and I sent out my fleet because I saw the big giant fleet leave and usually that means something else enters and I got rewarded here. There is a 30 gun ship HMS direction, direct something like that and uh, we'll send our two uh, two ships out try and capture it in this battle uh, some advice i received on the discord was if i want to take a 40 gun ship usually you need uh like three 30 gun ships to take it and there's there's a couple more nuances to that but oh wow that has no crew why do the british keep sending out ships that have no crew very very interesting for sure um, if we can grapple it, oh man, it is, the wind is definitely not in our favor here, but let's, uh, let's try and grapple with this ship immediately, go a little bit faster, that is for sure, because we should be able to take this ship fairly, fairly easily. Okay, you guys need to go full sails. Come on. 
maneuver a little bit better, please. Ooh, that is that is looking good already. If we could just grab this ship like right away, that would be amazing. Alright. We're starting to get a good angle. Match its speed. And grapples away. There we go. Alright, this ship needs to come on in now. And hopefully our 207 men are better than them. Um, they're doing pretty well on their end. But we're... you can see the numbers. Hopefully you guys can see the numbers. We... I, I think we will take that ship. They are surrendering. Perfect. There we go. We have taken the ship and then go to the global map. That was really good because we took very few, uh, very little damage in that, very few losses. And if you, if you notice in this game, they changed ships to where there's a major ship degradation, um, as they, as they need a repair. I think it's too harsh. I don't, the consensus right now is like, it's cool in theory, but it's not, it's too harsh right now. And maybe there should be a way to remove the ship degradation. And that would be like when you upgrade your dock to say like a dry dock or something that you should be able to remove the ship degradation. Because really, if you think about it um, over time, uh, yeah, ships were definitely difficult to, uh, to repair, but I don't know about the ship degradation in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you can just look at some other ships of the time for sure. So um, I'm really happy about that. I, I need to rename these ships to USS because now they are, they're no longer his majesty's ships. They're mine. They're my ships now. I am the captain now. And uh, USS Director. That's an interesting name. And then he has a upgrade. I always like willpower um, stops your ships from... Okay, well, I thought I chose willpower. Is that bugging out? Upgrade available, apply. I don't know. The the ships ship stuff in this game still feels a little yeah, a little iffy to me. Um so those guys were going up to Hatfield to hold it. I'm a little worried about Bennington. I decided to just send Richardson up here because that'll have that'll give us three regular regiments, which they have oh they have well, they have three and then 58 dudes in another, so those 58 guys don't matter. But uh, that, that'll that be, like, even on all of that, and then we'll have two, what do you call it, two militia with them also. So King George has refused to read it and declared the colonists traitors. So was this the, um, wait, what? I'm not really sure because it's not the Declaration of Independence yet, so... If anybody knows what that referred to... Right? Because the Declaration of Independence is July 4th, 1776. I'm not, I'm not going crazy, right? So I'm not really sure what that uh, King George uh, refusal to read thing was, if maybe the, the colonies sent a demand, which sounds about right. I think there was something that the colonies sent to King George. If anybody in the comments um, knows what that's referring to. You guys were awesome last time uh, giving me the correct pronunci pronunciation of Minutemen and the history that they're called Minutemen because the whole concept was that they would be ready at a minute's notice, which I vaguely remember that now, but I didn't realize that was, you know, why they were called that. I knew they were they were troops that were designed to be more readily available than your average average militia whereas like your average militia their contracts would come and go and that's kind of where they get their bad rap from to me um historically is that you know like the militia they they might just say like oh we're no longer like our, our contracts up or they don't really have a contract though right didn't militia they, they were kind of free-flowing, or maybe they had really short contracts. I know it was one of the reasons why George Washington really pushed the concept of the con Continental Army. 
was because of um the, like how militia would come and go I, I know that was a big big sticking point for them so let's take a look at materials report um so i started building that over there over here these guys don't have enough construction points to build lester is built out hartford i can't really do that yet providence you're building a carpenter shop you're building a schoolhouse so the next thing would be a carpenter shop there i i could build out middleborough but as i said that's the one the british really like to hit quite often and then i would like this to have maybe like a recruiting house also but i think the i think the carpenter shop will be more important um early on so that's uh I, I think we can can we take them how's how's this looking those are those are really really short is it muskets that we're short on uh very short on muskets very short on man manpower there's a lot of things we are short on i don't really want to buy those muskets at the time at the current moment uh we could actually build the recruiting house here as I said, I, I would like this to sort of be a recruiting haven. Uh, Hatfield. Okay, what is going on over here? So, man, this is this is rough. We had long, uh, we had a long dis, we had a long discussion and made decision to offer two rum to France. It must improve our relation. Okay, I know that uh, what do they call it? Localization is one of the very last things you do in a game. Oh, man, this is rough to read. That is really, really rough to read. But uh, yeah, we'll do this. We want our relationship with France good. And minus five reputation is rough. Um, never, never take a reputation loss. That is for sure. I wonder if we can sneak these ships out again. Um, we will probably do something in a moment. Okay, just to show a little thing off here. We do have our three ships engaging uh, HMS Baltic. It's just a 12 gun ship. So we should win this one handedly now. There, There is that bug I've been referring to where the enemy seems to be able to disengage very easily and that's been frustrating me quite a bit. Um, there are two other ships out here. I'm not sure what they are and one ship there. The reason I don't really want to fight this is because it's just a 12 gun ship. The auto resolve is probably better than I am and I, I could capture it and sell it but the problem is i don't want to keep sending my navy back to port all the time i'd like them to to really capture something of value and if they do some damage they can gain some reputation here looks like they might actually sink the ship this is the first time i've seen no nope. see there we go there's that bug i was talking about and we didn't gain any reputation now we immediately caught back up with it so I'm not, I, I don't in understand how that works per se, but um, let's, let's just let that go on as far as uh, civilian muskets. I feel like I need to buy, uh, I don't really like doing that. I need to buy some just to get this going up over here and make sure that those guys are doing well. Cool, we have uh, Hatfield has plus 7% loyalty to the United States because of a newspaper writing. We have a project for our Chief of Navy, and I think we will do the dry dock. That will be, that'll be the plan over there. So 32, okay, there's a two reputation, which I think was that we gained from dealing damage to that ship. There's that bug again. Yeah, see, oh, there's a 28 HMS Lizard. Okay. This is a ship I would like to capture. So let's, uh, let's try this out. Now, HMS Lizard has 194 men on it, so it's not going to be an easy, easy one like the others. Need you guys to... We're, we have the weather gauge against us, which is really, really bad. Um, so we need to move into the weather gauge. So this one should be a little bit more difficult to capture. I, I don't know how profitable this capture will be, but um, eventually these are not the ships that I want in my fleet. I want... Why are you reversing? Looks like they're reversing, right? Because the wind is... 
Do I need to close my sails when the wind is that bad? I don't I don't know. Um, but the wind should be a little bit better if I turn like so. One of the best things historically to do was zigzag, but they don't really have that in this game. Um, I find the it's a little I don't know. The I, I think the age of sail mechanics could be a little bit better, which is interesting because they had an age of sail game. Um, so hopefully we can beat this ship. It's two less guns than us, but it seems to be doing very, very well against us overall. I wonder maybe if you could speed up a little. You're going a little too fast. And then... Oh, if I click him, he does that. That's, that's cool. Alright, and then you'll go over here. So he follows him if I click that? That's that's actually pretty darn cool. Oh, and he matches the speed over there. That's also really cool. So USS Director could sort of stop being in the in the front of the engagement by the looks of it. Um, I do need you guys to target over here. And you can go... Okay, so what I want to do now is probably break off and I want you to sort of move out that way and you break off over here you can continue going over here probably go slower and now I'm trying to go in for the capture this director's taken a beating but it's now showing its butt to us which is interesting and naval engagements are so slow all right, can we turn into you, you turn that way, you turn over here. How are you doing? How you doing? I don't think the British want to hear Joey right now. Okay, let's slow down. Are we in range? Oh, I don't know if we'll get that grapple off. We might be too far away. Okay, you need to stop firing. Ah, man, I think we failed that. I think we failed miserably. Okay. That was, uh... Oh, they surrendered. HMS Lizard just flat out surrendered. Okay. So I don't think we have to board it. I think we just capture it. I don't know how it surrendered. Maybe just enough morale damage or seeing that it was outnumbered 3 to 1. I feel like that was really lucky on our part. Okay, so we have to hope that we can get to port before the enemy can engage us, because I do believe there is a 68 gun ship, 68 gun ship out here, and I would love for them to get back to port, just sail directly to port. I really, really, really hope in the future they add some sort of disengage button for the naval, um, and they are in there. Perfect. I was, I really wanted. I really wanted them to to get there before I put my attention elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is build up another just crappy militia. Um, they're going to have a good officer, though. Let's do this guy who has a wild variety of stats. And I just want something like the three militia, and they'll go to Hatfield later. So great. We have we have new new ships. HMS Lizard will be renamed to uss lizard because it is mine Ooh, it has nothing but nine pounders on it that's pretty cool i wonder i would love to get rid of all of these six pounders why does it say apply i don't know what that apply was but that's uh that's apply that now you can see that my whole actually my whole deg degradation isn't terrible i mean it is terrible but it's not as bad as it could be at least i think this is minus 48 this is minus 226 that's pretty rough I, I would like it to be different i don't know what are your thoughts on the um structural hull degradation and the overall ship degradation i like it in theory but i don't know i don't know how i feel about it in the overall idea 
of a, of a video game of a computer game um I, I think it's just one of those like things that punishes the player for no real purpose um as i said i if there was a way to get rid of it eventually i think that would be better and i think by by upgrading your dock to like a dry dock or something i think that would be a better way to go about things but currently as it stands can't say i'm the biggest fan of it if you watched my video on uh the, the update patch i was kind of wishy-washy on it and it seems like the discord is also kind of wishy-washy on it it's like it's cool in theory but its implementation is more like uh, a punishment than anything else so we're probably going to wait until this force gets up here gets to fort ticonderoga drops off its men and then we have some more troops available to us so this is good we can now go down here um and grab henry knox and more importantly the magazine which brings us to the six pound field gun and eventually the 12 pound field gun and then what we'll eventually do is go here to ironworks mortars company and then go down the mortars we have a bunch of eight inch land service mortars in our um in our storage which is we got that i think from either fort saratoga or fort ticonderoga but we can't use them because we can't create a mortar company so that is uh, rather interesting on that front okay it is july 16th of 1775 and our forces are looking good so we'll probably grab a bunch of them i wish you could brigade up a little bit easier i find the brigading in this is a little difficult but a lot of people have complained about that i don't know if they'll ever put a true army organization out I would absolutely love it. Let's just have join army. But we're going to go take on Fort Frederick. And uh, I think this this might be the last battle and then a quick wrap up after. Um, okay, they are, they're coming out, which is absolutely fantastic. And then there is that. So let's, uh, let's take this battle. I, I like, hopefully we're not too close to the enemy. That was one of the problems i think it was fort saratoga um i don't think yeah it was fort saratoga yeah this looks like a, a better distance our army is still just like all over the place um please 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 give me a deployment zone in the future that is that is my number one want right now here we are on the battle map you can see i have a bunch of orders queued up at the very beginning i like to pause and queue up these orders and get our forces into position and then um, for some reason, the British are, are coming forward. This is one part of the AI I wish. I wish in fort battles, I mean, this is a terrible fort, so they can't fit their whole force in there. But really, like, if they anchored their army around the fort, I think that would make a lot more sense. Looks like they're sending some forces back, and then some forces they're not sending back. So it, it's rather interesting what they do and don't decide to do here. I'm going to send these militia that way um, over here I think these guys are forming up somewhat fine um, would like you guys to hold you guys need to blast them to to pieces and then this cannons moving up it'll be should be in a pretty decent position when it's all said and done let's shift you guys forward I believe I have a cannon going there so you guys could probably just sit behind that cannon that's probably a good spot for you let's grab these militia they're going out on the flanks i kind of like i'm really digging militia as sort of a flanking force i like their minutemen um i think that's a like really good use of them out on the flank for sure and then like the they're 150 men really good at maybe disrupting the enemies uh enemy skirmishers that those are just some of my some of my ideas there i think we are going to however shift this group up a little and these these guys might retreat i just gave them the fallback order because our artillery is is shifting up and i would like the artillery to be protected pretty well over here that artillery piece is blasting away at us but that is perfectly fine We'll shift these guys up keep moving forward and then 
Um, who else? You guys can shift over here. Quicksilver probably needed more about there. The center looks to be doing really, really well. Somebody has surrendered, but then they surrendered. Oh, it's this over here. I mentioned this in the Discord. I would really like if um they kept their original flags for situations like that, where it gets very confusing on what exactly is going on. Because the game is like, oh, they surrendered, now they didn't surrender, now they did surrender, and it's like, eh. Alright, that unit shattered, so they're gone. That's fine. Get them out of there. Ooh, I don't like how you guys are positioned, so let's continue moving you up a little bit. Uh, not, I don't want you blasting your guys in, in the rear. Um, not many people like taking it in the rear. If you do, um, it's probably not musket fire. That's probably what I would have to say to that. But I think, uh, I mean, they just took a bunch of friendly fire. I don't really care about that because they're, you know, units that are surrendering. It's kind of like that scene in uh, The Patriot where they're like, they were surrendering and they just straight up shot them and killed them. And then Lafayette, I think that was Lafayette, right? Is that supposed to represent Lafayette? Uh, he, you know, gives his diatribe on the British didn't care about surrendering when they fired upon a ship that contained his wife and children and they burned. I wonder, um, I don't know the history behind any of that. Obviously the Patriot is not a historically accurate uh, movie, but it is, of course, based on historical incidents, um, or, or points in the war. The, one of the examples being that the final battle is sort of a mishmash of, I believe it's Calpens, and I'm not sure what the other battle is that it represents, but there's definitely some um, similarities, definitely, for the Battle of Calpens. That is for sure. Now, this artillery over here, I kind of want to take it with militia. That might be the might be the best way to go. Um, not let our regulars take the beating, but have the militia take the beating. I mean, that's what militia are for, right? To be the expendables? Or is that not how you're supposed to do it? <laughs> Don't tell the militia! They're expendable! Um, I might be more similar to Lord Cornwallis than... Well, Horatio Gates didn't necessarily like militia either, did he? I don't know, uh, there was somebody who liked militia. George Washington definitely did not like militia, um, because that was part of his thing about creating the Continental Army was because the militia kept sort of retreating. Okay, that's a lot more Brits than I thought. I would really like to take out that artillery over there. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we will be able to get to it. Let's see, can you guys shift up over here? It's probably a little bit better. And then we need to continue applying pressure. So let's move, probably move this artillery up to where they were. And then you guys, probably you three, I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. Oh good, their artillery is sort of maybe going away. Maybe. That's, that's at least the hope on my part. It's probably not what is happening, but, you know, I can always have a dream. There There is an American dream, and my American dream is that the British artillery goes away. They should be able to hit that. If they can hit that in the flank, that would be really good. And you guys continue moving up. You guys continue moving up. Okay, there's uh, some skirmishers moving out over there. I mean, that, that's really good flanking fire on, on that artillery. So I think it should go pretty well. Let's move you guys up over here. And then we should be able to do something over here. Yep, keep firing can, uh, round shot at my skirmishers. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then you guys move up. Come on. Take out take out that artillery. That would be fantastic. Or not necessarily. I doubt you'll take it out, but 
if you can cause it to route like you just did, that would be excellent. All right, so let's move our artillery probably, um, probably about there. We don't need to charge, that is for sure. And then let's grab this artillery, try and put it maybe over here, and then that should give us a nice core of troops over here. And then this flank is looking a little little light, so let's send a couple reinforcements over there. Quicksilver needs to move up. You guys can form more of a center behind those guns. And then it's just kind of uh, surrounding the fort. That was one of the recommendations I was given. That's what I used to do in my previous campaign. But obviously it's a little bit difficult when you only have two artillery batteries. Here we have five artillery batteries, so this is a lot better. And I think I can position my guns better now because I know where the line is forming. And then as I said, we'll move you guys up over here to support. Um, somebody shattered that was their, their skirmishers, that's perfect. Quicksilver, go over here. And then the more artillery fire we can put into the enemy, the better. And then this is where it gets a little bit bloody, but I think if we continue to surround them, I think we will be doing pretty well. At least, uh, you know, that's that's always the hope. Doesn't necessarily always go that way, but um, if we can continue to surround, that'll be fantastic. And if I can move you guys over there, move you guys over here, just behind that artillery, that'd be great. You guys can support this artillery, I think, I think I would like you guys to get out of there. It looks like you're sort of intermingled with the artillery. I think if we could have you guys move up and then these militia could go that way, you can shoot over here. You guys could probably move up over here. That would be fantastic. And now we're just hounding them. Um, there's that surrendered but not surrendered thing. It's because they surrender and they're touching touching their allies. Um, hopefully it's consensual touching. But they they flip-flop. And they, they've definitely improved how su the surrender mechanic works. But it definitely has a lot of work. There's a lot of work to be done still, which is fine. It's a it's an early access game. Why is this unit? Are they oh they're taking too much fire. Uh oh, that's not good. And then those guys just broke. So let's move them back in. Let's move you up. I think that was militia. Um, so that darned militia. Somebody surrendered, then surrendered again. Uh, this artillery piece is really taking it and then that unit just broke so that's not good we probably need a few more units to push forward although not really sure at this point necessarily what to do okay you guys hit them have you move up that was artillery fire grape shot that's not good um yeah this is becoming a little bit more costly than I really wanted it to be, but what are you going to do in this situation? Because our artillery is not not really doing its job. I really need it to hit other. We just took a, a wound on a... What does it say they're charging? They're not charging. Okay, somebody surrendered. Get, get them out of there. Come on. Don't have them... Pull a Benedict Arnold. Okay, you guys need to move up over there. If we can have you all move around that way, uh, maybe more like that for the time being. You probably need to stay over here as a reserve. Uh, that's the retreating guys. Perfect Quicksilver over here. Um, it's not going fantastic, but it's working. The more surrenders we can get, the better. Um, there's another surrender. Perfect. Grab them. Uh, Percy Hampstead. Sounds mighty British. 
My name is incredibly British. If you ever get to know what my full name is, you'd be like, ah, yes, the whitest person ever and the most British person ever. Got it. Uh, it is. You might as well. My parents might as well have just called me like Whitey McWhiteface or something like that. All right, there's another surrender. Perfect. Looks like we're doing really well on this side. Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing? No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. Not what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, okay. So where was I besides Whitey McWhiteface? Move you guys up over here. Um, can you guys charge that? I don't know. Did those guys shatter? Probably. And then let's continue. Let's grab you guys down here. Push. We need to keep pushing forward. I just saw the dreaded... Dreaded crisscross. I absolutely hate that mechanic from, uh, from Civil War. And what I mean by that is I grab multiple units and try to try to move them forward and instead of moving forward they move diagonally across each other it's not as bad in this game but in american civil war it would cause a lot of blank uh blinking shots and casualties that way which was not good okay they've surrendered get them out of there so we'll probably just go on fast forward mode this is where the enemy should probably do a bunch of mass surrenders and shatters and things like that and this is exactly what we want to see. So, there we go. Now, we might cause some friendly fire because, I mean, cannon shells are going through the fort. And, uh, you know, the, the cannon shells have to go somewhere. All right, there's the there's a mass retreat. There should be a mass surrender, too, from guys. Okay, so there's, as I said, mass surrender. Mass Surrender. Oh, they got through that hole, though. Um, darn. Oh, there's a Surrender. Okay. Should be another Surrender. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop firing. Cease. Cease and desist. Stop. Stop shooting your own men. For the love. Okay, well, you're going to get away. Oh, nope, they surrendered. Perfect. That was probably a few too many casualties right at the end from Friendly Fire. But that's all right, I guess. Um, so pretty good there. Pretty good. Now, I made a mistake. I think it was in my Lexington Concord. Where I was like, oh, those guys did really well. So uh, at first glance, you're like, oh, my, my guys did really well. No, these are British. They were captured. Now, you can't do, like, player. Now, nah, see, it still doesn't work. Because it includes the guys you captured. So that's unfortunate. I, I don't... Eh. Oh, well. I would like them to keep their original flag, and I mentioned this in the Discord, and if you guys agree with me, go into the Discord under the feedback thread and like my comment or thread that says, uh, you know, units should keep their original flag because it becomes a little bit confusing. Um, so, you know, that that's the battle of... where are we fighting? I don't even know. Fort Frederick! It sure was. Okay. So we took Fort Frederick. Perfect. Um, and once we take Fort Frederick, oh, he's leveled up already. Um, plus 10 experience, plus 20% move speed. I like that one a ton. Uh, minus 20% ammo of units. I'm assuming that's ammo consumption. That's that's worded wrong. Man, move plus 20% move speed. I don't know. Oh, man. Ammo's good, though. We like ammo. And then we just took Fort Frederick, so perfect. Let's join the garrison um, so that they can recoup their losses. And that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, hopefully we're close to the 45 mark. We might be a little bit over, but I'm trying my best to stick to that. So that is it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe. All of that YouTube jazz greatly helps out the channel. There we go. Fort Frederick is captured. 10 reputation and five four pounder galloper guns as always guys until next time